Elul, if you want to start. Uh, good morning from my part. Buongiorno e buongiorno to cover all languages, I think, from uh, the present, for, for the people that are present here. I will I welcome you for this uh, webinar. And uh, no, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, just to, to say to everybody, uh, I cannot move uh, the slides myself, so I will have to to say something uh, to new to change slides. Can we go forward, please, no, on the slides? There. No, can we move, please, to the next one? Next slide, please. That's this one. Uh, I, I see only the first one in my screen. Oh, sorry, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Share. Can you see it now? Okay, that's okay. okay that's <clears throat> WHO published in 2015 the report on aging and health. This time, WHO moved away from uh, the previous concept which was to treat uh, deficits, was talking about disabilities. And uh, WHO moved to the new concept to support residual wellness of the older people. And this was an innovation. Uh, WHO in the report is talking about healthy aging. And what is healthy aging? Healthy aging is the process that enables individuals uh, to wellness, the well-being of the individuals, through maintaining functional ability. And functional ability is a construct of three uh, components. And you see the intrinsic capacity of the individual, the environment of the individual, and can we see the next one, please? And the third, the interaction between these two components, the interaction between intrinsic capacity and environment. And when we are talking about intrinsic capacity, we mean the sum of the physical and mental capacity of the individual. This concept, can we go back, please? I, I will tell you, please. Uh, <clears throat> this concept is based on the good, uh, on the good reserve on the functionality, not on deficits, as I said before. So to be able to uh, be able to de to describe the intrinsic capacity, you cannot do a single assessment in specific times. You need to do multiple assessments, uh, multiple observation over time, and this, as you see, will come close to the Freysafe uh, project that I will. Uh, be explained a little bit later. The next one, please. <clears throat> so, it is important, therefore, to describe the intrinsic capacity. In a report of Cesare this year, recognizes uh, five components. Cognition, the psychological component, vitality, sensory, and locomotion. They are a little bit the same domains as we know them from frailty. The, uh, next one, please. The characteristics of these uh, uh, domains, just as an example, I start for the cognition, is that each component of the intrinsic capacity affects and interacts with other components. It is, you see, the circular, uh, the circular way. For example, cognition, we know that it is uh, uh, poor cognition confers higher risk for poorer outcome. It has a straight correlation with the psychological factors and also uh, has a strong input of the environment. Some people say that uh, if, we sh if we change the environment, we can maintain cognition. And if you maintain cognition, and I give this as an example, we, we maintain and, uh, uh, intrinsic capacity. So in this way, we are talking about the psychological part, the psychological component of the tracing capacity. I, I remind you the uh, sub threshold depression that individual elderly people 
uh, can suffer for depression that they, they did not fulfill the criteria of uh, the adults. Uh, how this uh, may, how this depression can affect the other components uh, things can get worse for example uh, and i go to the sensory impairment if we have visual and hearing impairment this influence uh, uh, the psychological bit that they can influence the cognition especially when they coexist uh, visual and uh, hearing impairment the, we are talking about uh, vitality, which is the balance of energy intake and expenditure, which we express it as uh, obesity and uh, weight loss. And locomotion, that we know how important it is, because just gait speed and uh, muscular strength, for example, we can give a good prediction of life expectancy of individuals. So we have the intrinsic capacity is something that we try to uh, maintain. We have the different domains, the different uh, concepts around it that they interact between themselves. And we have the environment like social isolation, uh, uh, economical uh, uh, poverty, uh, decreased motivation, uh, everything that they interact. <coughs> To build and describe this intrinsic capacity, you need uh, uh, long trajectories, multiple observations, and to be able to plot this in the future. Next one, please. And we are coming to the to frailty. Frail, frail is the individual who has decreased intrinsic capacity. With this in, decreased intrinsic capacity. It probably includes the term of functional reserve, reduced functional reserve that we used to uh, describe in frailty, and make this uh, individual, this decreased reserve, make the individual vulnerable to stressors. This is frailty, and uh, all of us, uh, I think, we know about it. Therefore, if I may go to describe a little bit more the project, please, next one. Uh, we try to uh, to be able to describe the phenotype of frailty through the conventional geriatric assessment that you can see in the right part of, of your slide. And we do it with the conventional geriatric assessment, which is in usually in the clinical setting. Uh, you do a single shot evaluation. You have, of course, limited data, and you try to interpret and give uh, a, a good guess about the status of the of the patient what we what we propose and we try to validate is the frail safe system which uh, the patient will be assessed in the environment you have multiple signals there are multiple observations can be a whole day observation can be a full day observation can be less than that but there are multiple observations therefore you collect uh, a larger number of data that you can uh, extrapolate information that they are closer uh, to uh, probably what frailty it is next one please so how we can do that uh, uh, individuals people, older people, use uh, accessorized vest. They have a smartphone. They have a tablet that they can play games. They take the, as you can see in the slides, they can take the blood pressure, a uh, dynamometer, and all these gadgets that they use collect continuously information. For instance, the heart and respiratory rate, more importantly, the posture of the patient, of the patient, of the individual, not to call him patient at the stage, the individual, whether they are stable or unstable, falls, near falls, probably they are very important, and that indoors and outdoors. The movement in their own house, the movement outdoors, 
uh, social interactions and at the same time uh, through gaming you assess uh, cognition behavior uh, psychological state motor state and also through dynamometer through uh, gaming you can intervene and uh, uh, possibly do rehabilitation we collect, uh, collect also medical information, as you can see, comorbidities, which is a strong point, uh, a factor that can influence uh, all these domains, as we said. So if we can see the next uh, slide, please. <clears throat> we have this uh, older person, we collect all this information. With this information, we extract and we build a, a virtual patient model, which is available to the clinician. Uh, the clinician can see trajectories and changes uh, in time, can see transition of the state of uh, the individual, and can uh, go and intervene through different uh, ways that I can see you later. Recommendation, lifestyles, so we'll see it a little bit more later on. So if we see the next slide, uh, we can, uh, through this uh, frail safe system, which is a one shot clinical assessment, just I uh, do a sub conclusion of what I said that now. The frail safe is a clinical assessment we always do, but more than that is uh, uh, all this uh, information that uh, we collect uh, almost continuously and we built. Uh, uh, we build uh, uh, as reliably the situation, the, the status of uh, the individual. And we go to the left side of your slide, the frailty management. We, we, through this information, we can make a risk assessment. We can try to predict uh, uh, future events, future adverse events. We take into consideration the comorbidities. We can describe uh, uh, frailty. You, you can make trajectories for the future. Clinicians and the, also the person themselves can see trajectories of the, of the status in the future. And uh, this uh, evaluation is useful uh, uh, <clears throat> for knowing what we have, what we deal with. For example, I give you an example, uh, if somebody needs to have an operation, a surgical operation, somebody has uh, needs to do a chemotherapy, the geriatrician also has to give an opinion how, uh, what is the condition, the general condition of uh, the older patients uh, and how well they will stand uh, these interventions. Therefore, uh, clinicians will have a better knowledge about uh, uh, the older person, and at the same time, we can uh, uh, intervene with uh, with health uh, suggestions uh, and eventually in the future uh, treatments. And also, there is another part which is an event management, is a recognition, for example, of falls, uh, loss of orientation uh, when they are wandering around. Uh, and uh, there is also something that I did not mention before, a language analysis of uh, the writing that can predict, uh, can also be correlated with frailty and can predict uh, even uh, adverse uh, outcomes. The next one, please. So I go to summarize a little bit uh, uh, after trying to give a picture of what frail safe it is. Uh, uh, what are the objectives uh, is, um, uh, of course, to better understand frailty through multiple observations that they are repeated in time and time again, uh, to be able to measure quantitatively and qualitatively measures of frailty. There is also a problem that uh, so far we mainly focus on certain items of this intrinsic capacity or if you want it of functional reserve, which is locomotion, gait, speed, etc. Now we are trying to give a weight in each of these domains, what it is the best to be examined, to be able to uh, see this capacity, uh, the, the interest capacity glo uh, globally, 
and uh, we try to develop real life sensing to be able to intervene and make uh, uh, risk uh, estimations and plan the, for the future of these individuals in order to support uh, healthy aging and uh, wellness, which are the key points of uh, uh, WHO. And the last one, please. The next slide. Uh, and of course, the impact is, uh, is, is there are uh, two different, uh, uh, we can see the impact in different ways. One that I like to say is, uh, uh, just to give you an example, the industry, scientific community, they have developed uh, a new drug, uh, if you want a, a supplement, a nutritional supplement, and they want to test it. It is impossible to test it and have meaningful results in the general population of older people because um, you need uh, thousands of people to, in order to make a study. If uh, you have a system that you can select uh, uh, all the people at high risk of uh, worsening, uh, uh, if you select uh, people at high risk of changing frailty status in this case it is easier uh, more efficient to test uh, this new intervention as i described before in a smaller number of uh, uh, individuals so it is something that is very useful in the industry and in the scientific community on the other hand somebody can say that a clinician can have a better picture and uh, coordinate better the matters of this uh, uh, all the people. I mentioned the example of uh, surgery, chemotherapy, and many other things that are related to uh, to the health problems of these individuals. And uh, the other possibility is that uh, even the people themselves can see their, their own performance, their own trajectories for the future, and take in their hands something that the WHO also, WHO also stresses to take the, in their hands uh, their health and their well-being uh, and uh, contribute more actively in maintaining it. And next one, please. These are the partners. Uh, you are aware and these are the communication um, uh, information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yanis. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you, I hope the participants had now a better understanding of um, the whole thinking behind the project. Now we will go to the second presentation uh, with Marina Kotsani. Um, Marina, if you are ready, we can start. Yes, I'm ready. Thank you, Nu. I would like uh, also from my part to welcome you to this uh, seminar and uh, to thank you for your interest uh, in uh, the Fairly Safe project. Um, I'll try to avoid the uh, overlapping with the previous speaker. Uh, however, I would like to refer to the phrase that uh, we adopt uh, in the current project. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, definition of Frailty could be that uh, uh, it is a syndrome that is characterized by diminished uh, strength, endurance, and uh, reduce uh, physiologic reserves, uh, as uh, Mr. Ayu explained uh, uh, previously, that increases the uh, ability to adverse health outcomes, uh, uh, like uh, loss of autonomy and eventually death. Another characteristic of the frailty to absolutely define it and uh, consequently uh, the difficulty to early diagnose it. It's also important to know that uh, this syndrome is very frequent, uh, mostly in the AIDS population and uh, could potentially be um, or even reversed uh, under certain circumstances. Um, because it is a reverse in uh, some cases, uh, we aim in this project uh, at uh, knowing more about frailty and how we could possibly in the natural course, uh, history, and uh, delay it. 
next slide, please. Uh, so there is a longer list of the I will not uh, present you once more, uh, as they are defined by the Free Safe Project. But uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, from the clinical point of view, we would like to summarize the medical objectives um, in the objective of uh, uh, development and testing uh, uh, of advanced technology devices for the detection of frailty and the prediction and possibly prevention of its evolution. Uh, actually, we want to investigate if uh, the frail safe system offers an added value on the standard means of detection and management of that we have in our, uh, in our availability so far. Next slide, please. Uh, but uh, what is the frail safe here, uh, the very safe system consists of a, a set of uh, devices, a set of uh, sensors of biological parameters that are known uh, or uh, may prove to be relevant to the very phenotype. Uh, these are uh, smart vests that to collect uh, uh, cardiorespiratory and movement data, uh, inertial measurement units or EMUs uh, for movement analysis playing virtual and augmented reality serious games uh, designed uh, for cognitive stimulation and physical activation. A dynamometer to, to play serious games. Uh, a mobile phone, uh, a smartphone to, to monitor uh, the physical activity by a GPS application. Uh, indoor monitoring uh, devices uh, or beacons, which is uh, these two uh, devices that you see in the top of the picture, the, the green and the blue one. Uh, these are small gadgets uh, that we use to detect indoor monitoring, uh, uh, in, indoor mobility, and um, to, uh, to make conclusions about the behavior pat patterns. And uh, these devices are uh, lent to the participants for a short period of time, usually on the group as we, as we will see uh, later on and also the frequency of the use of the, uh, the there is a nurse uh, that uh, visits uh, people at uh, home and uh, she explains uh, to older people uh, uh, which are of course not familiar with these technologies she explains uh, the users and uh, she guides them uh, uh, in order to be able to, to use them themselves um, and we encourage participants to use them uh, as often and uh, as long as possible for this period of uh, uh, usually five days uh, that uh, they have uh, uh, the devices in their homes uh, and this uh, period of time uh, for, for is called uh, the fairly safe session. Next slide please. Next slide. So that was already shown by Yanis Elula. Um, not the previous, please. <laughs> uh, I will not uh, end in detail because it has already been analyzed, but uh, we keep uh, showing it because it uh, summarizes the core of, of this project. Um, uh, actually, uh, the added value that we expect that the frail safe system will add uh, on the uh, conventional uh, comprehensive genetic assessment that we have uh, uh, in our availability so far to to approach uh, all aspects of uh, of uh, that, uh, this approach, this classical approach by performing comprehensive genetic assessments is uh, quite uh, uh, time consuming. Uh, it requires uh, expertise, uh, special skills, and offer specialized uh, settings. Uh, it's neither feasible nor probably cost effective to uh, to perform comprehensive genetic assessment for a significant proportion of uh, all order population. Uh, so uh, we are really there is really an, an unmet need to to search and find the other uh, failed assessment. Uh, what is uh, uh, interesting to say here? The, uh, 
as the fair safe system uh, uh, provides, uh, um, there is a possibility for we collect people's feedback uh, after they, they use uh, the devices and we try to uh, um, improve and fine tune the system itself. Uh, and uh, by this way, uh, we try to contribute to a better understanding of frailty and uh, um, create uh, favorable conditions for more specific uh, preventive strategies to develop uh, a system that is uh, adapted in all the people needs uh, and uh, the uh, difficulties, of course, uh, in terms of everyday use. Um, can we move to the next slide? So what we did uh, in practice is that participants uh, on a volunteer basis uh, from uh, community settings, um, some procedures that we followed are uh, collaborations with uh, older people's associations and clubs and uh, the organization of public events uh, in order to people about the uh, uh, frailty and the importance of uh, intervening in frailty and the objectives of the frailty that we were surprised that uh, people were uh, uh, interested even though they were uh, intimidated by the, the use of uh, technological devices Crisis, uh, with which they are not uh, so much familiar, but um, they were all interesting in uh, um, uh, finding, uh, searching a new solution uh, against uh, frailty, uh, because they are all interesting. Uh, finally, in maintaining their autonomy, uh, uh, independent uh, living. Uh, so um, this strategy of recruitment resulted in a. Recruitment of about 400 individuals so far from three clinical centers uh, uh, from uh, Patras, uh, Greece, from Nicosia, Cyprus, and from uh, Nancy in France. Next slide, please. So, uh, the inclusion and the non inclusion criteria are as uh, follows. Uh, the main inclusion criteria is the an age of uh, 70 years and over. Uh, and and uh, m most of non-inclusion criteria refer to practical restrictions faced to the study's requirement. For example, uh, uh, inability to speak uh, Greek or French, uh, according to the clinical center, uh, diagnosis of a, a terminal uh, a medical condition, uh, uh, or a significant cognitive impairment that will uh, uh, prevent people from uh, using uh, this uh, devices. Uh, otherwise, there were no significant uh, non-inclusion criteria. And uh, uh, by this strategy, we recruited participants at levels uh, of uh, frailty. And uh, there has been a randomization in uh, the different uh, study groups. Um, next slide, please. So this is a quite complicated slide that uh, uh, shows uh, the the partition of participants in uh, four uh, groups uh, per center um, is a schematic schedule of the procedure of the clinic. Uh, the numbers uh, you see in the left uh, edge uh, is uh, re refer to require to recruitment per clinical center, so you can mul multiply them by three. Um, so uh, participants are divided in uh, four groups. Uh, uh, groups A and B are, uh, have entered the studies in the beginning and are, are currently running the field studies. Uh, group B will be recruited in the second phase of the study, which is uh, on month uh, uh, on the 31st month, uh, which is uh, forthcoming July, actually. So the first two groups, A and B, have uh, tested the first versions of the fail safe system. Uh, uh, the set of uh, devices that I showed you uh, before, and uh, they contributed with their feedback uh, and with uh, the data that we collected to system, the fine tuning of uh, the system in terms of uh, technical means and um, in terms of uh, 
the um, adaptation to the needs and difficulties uh, of, of the users of the users of uh, from older people. The, the groups uh, C and D. Uh, will be recruited uh, in the second phase of the project, as I told you before. Uh, group C uh, uh, functions as a control group to group uh, group D. Uh, excuse me, functions as a control group uh, to group C. Uh, and group C will test the final version of the phase safe system and the modified devices uh, adapted to other people's needs uh, and uh, that in the project. Uh, there will be also two uh, subgroups of group C, uh, one of standard evaluation uh, with uh, shorter uh, phrase safe session periods, and the other of intensive evaluation with uh, longer uh, periods of uh, users of the devices. Um, all groups A, B, C, A, and C, B uh, also differ in the frequency of the clinical evaluations and the very safe sessions. Uh, um, so this uh, quite complicated uh, schema has been selected in order to test uh, several intervals of uh, uh, so as to identify the most cost-effective frequency of the phrase safe system users in order to detect uh, uh, measurable frailty transitions. Um, so we test uh, uh, all these intervals uh, to find out uh, finally uh, which is the effective in terms of uh, um, measurable uh, results. Uh, we are actually running the 28th of the project, um, yes. Um, when uh, the first two groups have uh, substantially contributed to the phrase F system uh, development and fine tuning, and we are actually preparing uh, to recruit uh, uh, group C and D in order to test the final integrated version. Next slide, please. So, in the course of uh, the clinical study, uh, events uh, that function as uh, proxy and uh, hard outcomes, uh, which represent an unfavorable evolution and uh, actually freight level transition. Um, so, uh, seven um, main clinical outcomes. Uh, Hard outcomes, uh, which are uh, faults and fractures, uh, and scheduled hospitalizations, uh, institutionalization, uh, death, and, and declining the activities of daily living and instrumental activities of daily living capacity. How, however, due to uh, the limited number of participants, uh, uh, showed the, the, the tight framework, framework uh, the tight uh, time frame, sorry, uh, of the project and uh, the relatively low frequency of uh, uh, hard outcomes. Uh, 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 we also use some proxy outcomes, uh, um, which are based on the data that we collect from repeated clinical evaluations and are described by the differences uh, in the uh, five uh, clinical parameters, uh, very schematically. The MMNS uh, or the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Score, which represents the cognitive function, the gate speed the test, which represents the physical function, the geriatric depression scale score, uh, representing the psychological status, uh, the weight loss, uh, representing the general health uh, index, uh, the status uh, self-assessment. Um, all data are fed uh, in an electronic case report form uh, that all almost uh, real time, and also by uploading all data uh, that are collected by the free safe devices on a cloud uh, dedicated uh, project. Uh, in this uh, way, all information are uh, centralized to the University of uh, Patterns database uh, for, uh, for analysis, for the creation of the virtual patient model and further analysis. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, So uh, I'm not an entering too much detail. It's a com quite complicated uh, um, uh, slide, uh, but uh, I would like just to show you that the most important clinical parameters monitored by the uh, 
uh, repeated clinical evaluations, uh, even though this is not exhaustive, uh, there are other parameters also. Uh, we see, however, the attempt to fragmentize freight in its various aspects, uh, um, medical, physical, uh, cognitive, psychological, etc., uh, to, to search for interactions between these aspects. For example, the letters you see in parentheses uh, represent uh, tags, uh, multiple domains of frailty. Uh, each parameter could uh, correspond to. Uh, for example, uh, if we take as an example the, the top of evaluation, uh, it could uh, uh, also affect uh, and be affected by the psychological, uh, uh, medical, and social parameters. So you see the letters C, uh, C, uh, M, and S. Um, this analysis uh, of uh, the interconnections and interactions of uh, uh, clinically measurable parameters uh, uh, tries to identify and propose a novel model of FATI. Um, in the context of this study, model, um, along with the data collected by the frail safe uh, devices also. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, um, some of these data summarized in this uh, uh, table, uh, which is uh, not exhaustive either. <laughs> um, so, here you can see these examples of uh, technical parameters, as well as the clinical relevance and frailty association. Uh, uh, as you can see, these data are collected by the WWBS, which is the smart vest that we showed you before, um, the GPS phone, uh, the beacons, localization gadgets, uh, the blood pressure monitoring device, and the serious games proposed. Next slide, please. For example, to, to give you an idea of uh, 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 the um, amount of data collected. Uh, for example, the, the WWBS device, uh, uh, the smart vest, uh, uh, collects uh, SSG measurements uh, such as heart rate, uh, heart rate variability, and uh, error intervals, uh, respiratory pattern measurements, the data related to, to movement of uh, the body, and uh, positioning. Uh, 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 EMUs, uh, inertial measurement units that are integrated on the vest. Uh, additionally, some measurements uh, are provided about the activity the participant performs while, while, while uh, wearing the vest, uh, such as uh, lying, studying, or walking, uh, uh, etc. So there is also a counter measuring the number of steps the participant has done uh, uh, while wearing the vest. Uh, uh, the step period also allows uh, uh, allows us to to uh, estimate uh, the uh, the speed of uh, uh, the steps uh, the walking speed actually and um, these metrics in clinical terms uh, uh, reflect um, mainly on medical uh, physical functional and maybe psychological and the social aspects of frailty and uh, could contribute to fall detection and uh, activity classification algorithms. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the application for smartphone uh, collects measurements about the geographic uh, location of the participants. Uh, and uh, these measurements can functional, medical, social, and even cognitive aspects of frailty. Uh, here you can see an example output of uh, of the visual output uh, uh, of the GPS logger uh, recording. Next slide, please. Uh, here you can see a, a representation, a schematic representation of the interlocalization application, uh, which is based 
is um, uh, the use of uh, Bluetooth uh, beacons uh, that we put uh, in the older person's apartment in uh, uh, several uh, rooms and uh, placing uh, these beacons in the house uh, of uh, uh, the, the room I use it and uh, uh, have a pattern um, and uh, we can infer and direct information uh, about for example, the physical condition, uh, for example, uh, difficulty of movement uh, due to pain, uh, uh, some clinical issues, for example, of the fact uh, that the person visits uh, the toilet too often uh, could be a, a useful uh, medical information, uh, or about uh, the individual psychological condition, uh, for example, uh, a depression or uh, apathy. Uh, could lead to a um, very limited, limited uh, movement activity. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, summarizes information collected by the various uh, uh, serious games used in the FreeSafe project. Uh, we are actually have uh, uh, we actually have uh, ten uh, games under construction, um, and we, we, we use them and. Uh, uh, them are uh, about to be released uh, on the next weeks. So these serious games aim at uh, evaluating and uh, to some extent uh, even training uh, older people in terms of cognitive uh, uh, or uh, uh, combined culture. Um, and uh, the difference is uh, in the, the output uh, might metrics uh, that these games provide us, of the differences over, over time, uh, will reveal uh, possibly useful information about uh, amelioration or deterioration, uh, and by this way it will provide us evidence for building up a frailty status profile uh, in a, always in a pleasant uh, way of, of uh, gamification. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I show you here an example of uh, one of uh, the games developed. Uh, it's the, the, the Flappy or uh, Red Wings game uh, uh, has been developed by Brainstorm. Uh, and uh, there is a small uh, aeroplane here. Um, the strength uh, exercise uh, on uh, a dynamometer, which is connected uh, to the tablet. And uh, the game generates a, a log file that uh, measures uh, with measurements uh, such as the speed uh, uh, the aeroplane is moving, uh, the, the number of lives uh, the player still has, etc. And uh, because it's operated by the dynamometer, uh, we also record the force uh, exercised by the participant. And uh, in clinical terms, this measurement uh, express uh, indicating uh, overall uh, body strength, uh, reflecting medical and physical uh, functional aspects of frailty, uh, but also some elements of uh, cognitive function, we would say, uh, mostly the executive function, the reflexes, uh, uh, the information uh, and uh, uh, reaction treatment uh, speed uh, and uh, the efficacy of the concentration. So this seizure game is actually Actually, an extra game that could also give uh, indices about uh, brain motor coordination and uh, its efficacy uh, and uh, reflects uh, functional and cognitive aspects of frailty. Um, even though uh, we should admit there are some uh, restrict uh, restrictions that could bias uh, this uh, particular game playing uh, conditions like. Uh, um, uh, make uh, this uh, game a bit difficult in playing. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, another serious game proposed uh, to the participants is the virtual supermarket game. Uh, 
developed by CERF, uh, we displayed on the tablet and mimics the activity of uh, going to everyday shopping. Uh, so at the end of uh, the playing session, uh, we derive scores that correspond to the correct items purchased, uh, the correct quantities, uh, the erroneous buyings uh, outside the of the shopping procedure, the payment procedure, if it, uh, it was correct, uh, the money exchange, and uh, the, the virtual supermarket game uh, is aimed at testing um, a variety of cognitive uh, processes, namely um, the memory, uh, visual and verbal, uh, the executive function, the orientation, the attention, um, mostly the executive function. And uh, uh, the performance of users uh, in the game has been uh, shown to be related to indications of uh, my cognitive impairment. Um, in fact, it's a valuable tool to monitor the cognitive function of the users and uh, uh, thus uh, reflect cognitive aspects uh, of reality. And uh, the last slide, please. So we do uh, all these. Uh, uh, so how how do all these uh, uh, functions, all these uh, um, monitoring, all these uh, are uh, combined and are integrated in the model, uh, uh, aiming to describe frailty? Um, uh, to sum up, uh, actually, the project works uh, as follows. Um, there are individuals that are followed up over a certain amount of time, uh, during which uh, several clinical uh, and technical measurements are obtained, and these are fed into the integrated uh, free safe uh, system, namely the, the virtual patient model, uh, which is this uh, blue cloud that you, you see here. Um, the technical metrics derived from the frail safe devices uh, come to be added uh, on the top of the clicks. So bo both uh, contribute to the construction of the virtual pricing model. And uh, the technical metrics are about to be evaluated for uh, their supplementary contribution in the detection of frailty. Uh, they're about to be tested for their performance as and uh, for their ability to be used uh, as uh, frailty biomarkers. Uh, so, um, throughout the, the course of the clinical follow-up of a person, of a person um, new metrics are accumulated uh, and uh, they enter the integration uh, system. Uh, the, repeat, the repetitive monitoring uh, with the frail safe devices aims that uh, detected even minor changes, uh, very discrete changes, uh, and uh, I identify the, um, the optimal frequency for the cost effectiveness of the application of the free safe system. Uh, that's why we, we take uh, repetitive uh, free safe sessions and evaluations. Uh, so these uh, technical index delta uh, difference. Uh, uh, which are possibly changes detected by the frail safe uh, devices uh, um, are thought to be more precise. We, we hope that the size uh, will be uh, earlier and uh, more pertinent and will be tested for the relevancy predicting the clinical evolution. Um, but with the result of the integration of uh, all these uh, metrics uh, is tested for its predict the uh, actually high risk profiles uh, and also uh, to determine the the special characteristics of this uh, high risk uh, this could contribute uh, to um, an early recognition of uh, alerts and uh, worries on uh, uh, in the course of uh, the follow up of a person and uh, thus uh, um, uh, aim at um, repairing uh, reversible uh, situations. Uh, by this means, uh, frailty prevention strategies could be targeted and applied 
uh, this is a course uh, to in order to to achieve uh, the always void, which is the prolongation of autonomous and independent uh, free living. And uh, I think there is uh, one more slide, please. So uh, all these uh, draw the picture of a quite complicated, uh, uh, quite uh, ambitious, I would say, study, uh, which has faced uh, many challenges uh, so far. Huh? You can imagine it was not uh, the easiest thing uh, to persuade uh, older people and to, to teach them uh, uh, to engage to new technologies. And uh, this has been one of the greatest uh, challenges of the work of uh, clinical teams. And uh, I would like to say that our nurses do really an extraordinary job uh, uh, in the field uh, in the field studies. Um, but uh, we also receive uh, positive feedback uh, that uh, makes us think that uh, projects like FreeSafe uh, that uh, to propose novel and high-tech products uh, uh, to all the population, uh, projects like this uh, to the health and to the overall well-being uh, of this particular part of the population and uh, could be even welcome the older people. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Um, despite the the couple of uh, oops of uh, well uh, connection discrepancies, we'll be trying to understand the most of it. Um, we're running out of time. Uh, Elena, now it's your turn to make your presentation about the evaluate well validation methodology. Uh, let me know when you are ready. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, I will try to make it quick so we don't run out of time. Uh, so hello from me as well. Thank you for uh, joining the webinar. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, validation of the Friends Safe project, um, uh, what we are all evaluation, let's say, uh, which is an integral component of system uh, systems development. Uh, what we are uh, we have we are planning because it has not started yet to do is first to evaluate the system components in semi-controlled environment carried out in small scale and carefully controlled scale case studies uh, to evaluate whether frail safe effectively encourages self care support of frailty through a longitudinal demonstration, uh, which I will explain later what it is, with the active participation of older people, uh, and uh, the, an evaluation of the developed uh, fail-safe fail -safe system using validated scenarios with the engagement of consortium as well as external users. Uh, no, can you move? Uh, okay. Okay. These are the aims as I just uh, mentioned them. And go to the next slide. Yeah, yeah. Go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, in line with the uh, uh, guidelines that have been set out in the in the process system development, the evaluation also follows the user-centered design methodology, which is a methodology that uh, re uh, refers to um, uh, developing and validating a system with the direct and continuous engagement of users, of real users. Uh, thus, for the validation of the, of the project, uh, the team will uh, directly engage seniors, uh, families, healthcare professionals, researchers, IT developers, and ethics and safety experts. Uh, the first validation activity that will be carried out at the small scale that I mentioned before um, um, uh, it will be testing the first uh, integrated version of the system, uh, which is kind of a technical evaluation in order to test the ability of the signal analysis, analysis algorithms to automatically categorize the signals on the basis of older people's activities and characteristics. 
And the second aim is to test the sensitivity of the sensors with respect to different environmental conditions. To achieve that, 30 participants were asked to follow a protocol of activities designed to take place in semi-controlled environments. And uh, its results will reveal whether the system needs improvements or whether it's, uh, it measures what it's supposed to be measuring. Uh, the second, the main validation activity that will take place concerns the longitudinal demonstration, which will be involving 150 participants from all three clinical centers, which is Cyprus, Greece, and France. Uh, group C and D, as Marina showed uh, before, uh, are the evaluation and control groups. And uh, in this, we will have uh, a randomly selected pool of uh, uh, potential participants which are available from its clinical centers uh, and, and they will be uh, in each group randomly assigned from those that we will be to lead. Uh, group C, like Marina mentioned before, will be divided into uh, subgroups and will be comprised of 20 participants per country. The first subgroup, which is the short term uh, duration, will have 20 participants uh, per country, and each will receive a clinical evaluation along with the system administration in month 31, uh, in which participants will, will be asked to use the system for three to five days. And upon retrieval, they will be asked to provide their feedback and evaluation. Where necessary, improvements on the, on the system will be made by the technical team because, before the next administration takes place. Uh, the evaluation of, uh, of group C and D is, is expected to be completed at the end uh, uh, of the project in month 36. Uh, the second subgroup, uh, which is the long-term subgroup of group C, uh, will be comprised of five participants who will receive the frail safe system in month 31 and will use it for 60 days. And since today is receiving in parallel guidance and continuous support from the clinicians of each of the three centers. Uh, the five participants will be clinically evaluated at the time of the system. Uh, no, can you change slide, please? Yeah, there. <laughs> uh, um, the five participants will be clinically evaluated at the time of the system administration. And uh, one month after the retrieval of the system, the clinicians will uh, check up on the five participants via phone, while uh, in month 36, uh, right uh, before the, um, the completion of the project, they will be uh, clinically evaluated again. And, and from this, it is expected that, uh, um, um, from this, they will check whether there is any changes uh, in their clinical status uh, from month 31 to month 36, uh, whereas, uh, which is uh, after 60 days of uh, uh, having the, uh, in using the French system, we are expecting to have some improvements in their clinical status. Uh, in uh, now group D, Will, um, yeah, group D will uh, serve as a control group. Uh, it will be comprised of 25 participants, but these participants will only receive a clinical evaluation in month 31, a phone monitoring in month 34, and, uh, and uh, a last clinical evaluation in month uh, 36. Uh, so they will not receive the present system, which we are expecting not to have any improvements in the clinical status when we're checking when we are checking the data. Uh, uh, the, in parallel to this uh, pilot evaluation, uh, let's change the slide. Yeah, uh, we are examining the user acceptance of the uh, frail, safe, frail safe system, which will be initiated through demonstrations uh, and uh, hands-on workshops. Uh, um, this way will allow us to uh, get feedback from other target groups of the, of the system. 
uh, and uh, the main uh, source of uh, uh, input will be via questionnaires that have been designed or are already existed. Uh, the target groups uh, that will be engaged are the families of senior people who will be participating in the, um, uh, in, in the evaluation group. Uh, interested family members will be asked to test the system and provide the feedback by completing the questionnaires that will be given to them. Uh, another target group is the healthcare professionals who will be a mixture of uh, consortium member healthcare professionals and external healthcare professionals and um, uh, their um, uh, satisfactions and acceptance of the system will be requested uh, after uh, they, uh, re they see the system demonstrated or they have hands-on experience in the system. Uh, in a similar manner, uh, I, internal and external IT professionals will be asked to evaluate the system from the technical point of view, uh, and they will uh, complete a specially designed questionnaire um, so that they uh, provide a heuristic evaluation, as it's called in technical terms. And uh, researchers uh, will be um, will be presented, uh, the, the data that uh, the fail safe system is collecting will be presented to consortium uh, member researchers and external researchers uh, in order for them to evaluate the adequacy and quality uh, of data that uh, are being collected for, uh, from a research perspective. Uh, the last target group that will be uh, um, that will be reached uh, is actually coming from two members of the advisory board who are safety and ethics experts and they will be asked to evaluate the fail safe system in terms of its ethicality and safety. Uh, the, these uh, two experts will receive a checklist of criteria against which they will be asked to evaluate the system. Uh, let's check. Okay, uh, like uh, uh, it has been shown before, the Creative project has a consortium of nine partners from six countries, and all of them are expected to be participating in the validation activity. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena. Uh, sorry for the non-synchronization of your speaking and, and the PPT, sorry. Um, Not a problem, it's okay. I don't know if the participants have questions uh, regarding the, the three presentations. Um, Hi. Hi, Madalena. Yes, I do. Go Hi. ahead. Good morning, everyone. So I have a, a few questions. Uh, compliments, congratulations for this extremely interesting study that is uh, piecing together a number of uh, tools uh, that we could uh, exploit uh, furthermore in our uh, action group uh, three and uh, uh, in the reference sites. Uh, so I was just uh, curious on uh, where uh, were the older adults uh, recruited? Because we did uh, a study on uh, community dwelling older adults and uh, the places where we recruited older adults uh, were influencing uh, the population. So this was the first question. Then I have another question on um, uh, the um, uh, questionnaires that were being used to assess uh, the effect, the impact of the intervention. Because, for example, uh, for um, cognitive domain, you are using Minimental and MOCA that are pretty rough scores that do not detect um, modifications in mild cognitive impairment that, in our experience, have been the ones who were more sensitive to the use of the serious games and of uh, ICT-supported interventions. Um, so, these are the first questions. All right. Um, I propose that Marina ask, uh, answers the first question regarding the population's recruitment. Can you provide us more information, Marina? Yes. Uh, uh, recruited uh, community dwelling uh, participants also, uh, as I said, in a vol vo volunteer basis. Uh, so we gave a public uh, speech uh, 
uh, we uh, had announcements on uh, local television and channels uh, on news no, the uh, we reached out to their uh, leisure clubs uh, and uh, and like leaflets, uh, and uh, we also performed uh, um, public speeches in, in uh, uh, settings uh, uh, with the subject of uh, frailty. And uh, at the end of uh, the, the lecture, we participate in the study. Uh, this uh, strategy was quite effective in uh, finding uh, volunteers. Uh, I understand that it's quite uh, because uh, one would think that uh, there is a motivation bias. Uh, but um, finally, uh, we managed to recruit uh, people of uh, um, all. Uh, uh, all frailty status, uh, all, all frailty levels. So there were those that are uh, very fit and uh, uh, would like to participate in the study. There were those that were, were starting starting to, to feel that they were um, functional as robust as before, uh, if we can say they correspond to the pre frail group, and also those that are already frail uh, that were interested. So a motivation bias in this recruitment uh, uh, strategy. Uh, finally, uh, we recruited several uh, kinds of uh, of participants, uh, if you like, because uh, their motivation uh, was uh, different, and finally uh, ended up uh, to to have a, a, a representation of uh, all frailty statuses. The community dwelling uh, uh, in individuals, uh, because when we're talking about uh, prevention strategies, uh, we are not, not going to, uh, to to intervene at uh, nursing homes, uh, uh, where uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's too late. Uh, we cannot propose uh, with uh, uh, without difficulty novel devices in people that are, are already in loss of autonomy. Uh, it's quite uh, delicate, and uh, uh, we followed this uh, recruitment strategy. Yanis, uh, you want to add something? If I may add, uh, it is indeed a uh, concern, the motivation bias, but uh, it is inherited in these studies that uh, you need participants that uh, they have to, to consent uh, to this participation, and it is a long process. So uh, I don't think you you can exclude it uh, 100%. Now, the second question of Madalena was about the, um, the questionnaire to assess the impact of interventions. I have to say that I didn't quite understand the whole question. So um, who of the three speakers would like to, to answer Madalena's question? Uh, I, I can repeat. Uh, uh, yes, please, Madalena. Okay, so uh, the question you have a pretty identified, a pretty tough uh, uh, outcomes impact, you know, monitoring impact, uh, um, and um, so I was wondering whether it would be more effective for the study to use some uh, uh, questionnaires that are more sensitive to detect the impact of the tools you are using on the population, because if you use uh, MOCA and Minimental, for example, for the cognitive domain, you may end up not detecting the, the scores that are improving. We use the, in our study the QMCI that is a, more effect, a very effective uh, questionnaire to detect improvement in the mild cognitive impairment that is uh, quite, uh, po uh, quite um, uh, diffused in uh, community dwelling older adults. And we proved uh, that uh, smart games can uh, revert uh, the MCI by five points. So maybe the mini Minimental and the MOCA are uh, two rough uh, scales, uh, two small scales uh, that can detect uh, uh, dementia, but not uh, MCI and improvement in the MCI. You have a, a short time frame in your study. So I don't know. This it was is also, yes, if, I may answer, right. it was, if I may answer, this was also a concern when we were choosing the scales uh, in the study. We wanted uh, 
MOCA, it is a scale that has been widely used for mild cognitive impairment. Uh, it is standardized also for Greek uh, population uh, uh, and of course as well as in the French population. So we decided on, uh, on that. Understand your concerns though. Harvest. And it's actually what we are trying to, to, to investigate the uh, um, weakness of uh, the tools that we already possess. Uh, so this is why to, to detect uh, uh, more discrete uh, differences by a serious game scores, for example. Example to 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 see if uh, uh, the the difference in cognitive performance uh, uh, is more uh, finely uh, described uh, uh, by this means. Uh, so uh, yes, we we took also under consideration the the translations available, the validations of the skills. Yeah, uh, translations are also another question because. Uh, uh, it's a very interesting set of tools uh, that you are using, uh, and I was wondering whether you are planning uh, to provide the uh, translations of uh, the serious games in other languages uh, so that we can uh, uh, plan uh, uh, to scale up uh, the use through the twinning uh, uh, that uh, the reference sites are planning uh, for uh, next year. This could be a, a way to extend the sample of uh, older adults involved in the study. Um, just for your own information, Marina and Yanis, the reference sites that Ma Madalena is talking about is, an, is a European network of um, good sites, European good sites, that are implementing actions to, for active and healthy aging. That's what Ma Madalena is referring to. And I think there are 77 reference sites at the moment. Um, so I think, like indeed, the, the translation of the series games could be interesting. Uh, and to be deployed in all the European network of reference sites. Uh, safe, uh, Failsafe is in our action group, by the way, is involved in every action group. So, because I, I, that has been presented at our last meeting in uh, 20, and uh, we have another meeting in Verona in June. So, maybe we could uh, talk about it uh, further uh, during the meeting. Uh, that will be nice, uh, but, uh, but there are some. Um inherited restriction in some uh, projects uh, what uh, is is the design uh, for instance we are making a prototype which definitely when it will be produced it will be uh, needed further development so in in that i can see many 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 other things to be added uh, translations as you said uh, but there are also some inherited limitation from the application and the uh, you understand I guess what I mean. Um, do the do the other participants have questions? Uh, I see familiar names like Ingrid, Mrs. Ingrid Kosman, uh, Elisa. I knew. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, everybody. This is a wonderful project, and I'm delighted it is taking place. My big question is, are you including couples in your testing? We are increasingly going to be encountering older couples who have developed codependencies and are helping each other survive and maintain their independence. Uh, so can couples be tested? There are some couples but uh, I will not have any power to, to see them separately. Statistical power. Thank you. I'm delighted that there are couples and uh, it would be interesting to uh, identify. Now, I think the key thing is that you know that you can, that couples can be tested. I think that's the key outcome from that. But would you envisage um the data collected as a couple or would you consider the interaction individually and then as a couple yeah, that, that would, i think that would be uh, analytically very difficult at this stage you'd have to have had it in your planning from the onset to have couples yes. as a separate group but at this stage to know that you can 
uh, that the system does operate in one household on two people. Okay. Just they told me right now that uh, in Patras we have 10 couples included in our study, which is a third of the, if I see the, the third of the study population. That's well, pretty good, so you could extrapolate, possibly. We keep in mind. Also some couples, but uh, I don't, uh, I cannot say the number, but I'm sure we have some couples from France also. Oh, that, that's good, but I, I realize that time is a huge constraint. So my key thing was, have couples been considered? They have. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, we have five more minutes before the webinar would end. Have the other participants more questions to voice? Or if the speakers want to add a final comments, a final uh, feedback about the presentation or the questions, please go ahead. I do have one more question, and that relates to actually uh, when it's all over and the next stage, the knowledge transfer and the costs. Um, all these projects are, are wonderful, but they're useless if they're not accepted by healthcare providers uh, who have healthcare funders or funding systems in various countries. For example, here in Germany, you'd have to have the acceptance of the health insurance companies uh, to even start implementing it. Uh, has that been thought through? Uh, I don't know who is going to be the right people to, to answer this. Uh, the question is, uh, we are building a prototype. Uh, we try to validate it because without the right validation, uh, I guess, uh, it, it will not going to work a lot. So with the right validation of this uh, prototype, uh, yes, and uh, the, give me a second, the, the, our, our team of, um, uh, they will try to contact uh, all the right people for dissemination. So the dissemination is part of the dissemination of the project. Which I'm not involved to take myself to be to give you uh, more details, but it has been discussed in well, our. Well, we have, uh, oh, maybe yourself. You out, uh, the, we have to stress out that in the course of the development of the project, the terms uh, have uh, uh, have consumed much of our thought and efforts, and uh, we have done our best. I, is uh, uh, yes, you are, uh, of course effective, but also um, uh, safe uh, to use. This will uh, will help in the uh, exploitation uh, uh, campaign. No, uh, would you like to add something on that? Yeah, I would love to, but I was actually replying to somebody, so not really paying attention to your question, Ink. I heard a uh, knowledge transfer. That's all I yes, heard. Yes, it was about knowledge transfer and acceptance by the uh, healthcare funders. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, that's one of our big uh, topics that we need to work on. Because as Elul said, uh, Yanni said, um, as long as the prototype is not validated, well, we want to discuss it with healthcare, healthcare insurances and so on about the fail safe prototype, but it's actually at this stage quite early to discuss yeah. it with them. Okay, I accept that. But That's it's just something we want to do, yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. So if you have any idea of or contacts uh, that you want to send me to invite them to, to discuss that further on, um, you're more than welcome to send that to me. <laughs> Ask me in due course when you need it, okay, and I will good. provide. Super. All right. Okay. Um, uh, there was a question regarding the recording and the PPTs. I will, uh, hopefully, because it is recorded, but I hope it is well recorded, uh, it will be published on the Failsafe website, uh, and the PPTs will be shared uh, as well among the participants, but also uploaded on the website. 
So if you don't receive the email, you can still refer to the website. Um, I think we can close now uh, the webinar. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending it uh, and for asking the questions, Madalena. Very interesting. Um, I hope to see you soon in another event or another organ uh, organization of a, of a, work of a workshop uh, in the framework of FrailSafe. We'll keep you posted about the validation of the prototype and hopefully um, we'll have it right. Have a good day, everyone. And if you have more questions, send us a, a, an email to the speakers or to me, and I'll transfer it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.